The American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine, AFRM, is the world's leading nonprofit medical organization dedicated to the exploration and application of innovative diagnostics and therapeutic interventions that aim to prevent, detect, and treat age-related diseases. The AFRM is the largest anti-aging medical society in the world with a membership base of more than 26,000 physicians and scientists from more than 120 countries worldwide. The Academy provides CME-accredited education, board certification, fellowship training, and postgraduate education. AFRM holds its conferences around the globe and has trained more than 100,000 healthcare professionals in the science of anti-aging and regenerative medicine. Aging is a process of biochemistry. It is not a process of candles on your birthday cake. We're moving towards a time, thanks to modern technology, modern understandings of the human genome, modern understandings of uh, biochemistry and endocrinology, that we can actually control those internal circuits within the cells of our body. And we can adjust metabolism to maintain it at youthful levels. And if it's at youthful levels, you'll perform at youthful levels. Every time I hear somebody say, anti-aging medicine is impossible, you can't change the aging process. Well, let's take a 55-year-old. He's 30 pounds overweight. He's got high blood pressure. He's got high cholesterol. He's lethargic. His sexual function is shot. His bone mass is down. His muscle mass is down. This guy looks like he's ready to slide right into the grave. Now we take this guy, we get him on the right hormone replacement program, the right nutritional program, we get him exercise, doing weight training. His bone mass changes, he's now lo he's lost 30 pounds. His lean muscle mass is much higher, his fat percentage is way down. His blood pressure has now dropped, his cholesterol has dropped. We have completely changed the physiology of this person. Have we anti-aged this person? Have we de-aged it? Absolutely we have. Have we changed his chronological age? Of course not. But have we changed his physiologic age? Absolutely. This is a different person now. And that's what anti-aging medicine is all about. We have a way of practicing medicine as it's never been practiced in the past. We have diagnostic tools where we can find the very earliest signs of cancer, heart disease, diabetes, Alzheimer's disease, neurodegenerative disease, arthritis, long before it ever presents clinically and interrupting that process. If you interrupt the process of disease, you never get the clinical manifestation of disease. If I can spot them five years early, 10 years early, 15 years early, before they ever manifest clinically, I can stop them, I can inhibit them, I can lock them up, I can tie them up so that they never progress to the point where they're going to affect the quality or the quantity of my potential lifespan. And so where a cancer will take away perhaps 20 years of my potential lifespan, or a heart attack will take away 30 or 40 years of my potential lifespan, or Alzheimer's will take away 10 years or 15 years of my potential lifespan. If I can detect these diseases early and I can inhibit them, I can lock them up, I can tie them in knots, I can stop the metabolic degenerative process from progressing, then I have essentially a cure for that disorder. And that is a revolution in healthcare. It means an extra 20 30 years or more of lifespan for every man, woman, and child today who embraces the anti-aging technologies. We talk about the longevity dividend, and uh, our explanation for that is as follows. The longest lived cohort of women in the United States are uh, Asian American women in Bergen County, New Jersey. They live 91.5 years of age. On average, that's the longest living population on the planet that we know of. 91.5 years of age on average, and they are enjoying the benefits of anti-aging medicine. They're well-educated, they have money, they're right across the river from New York City, and they have the access to the highest technology medicine, they have the best insurance, they have the best health care, and they're Asian, and so their focus is on prevention. And so they enjoy the benefits of the best of the best of anti-aging medicine, versus a similar cohort in South Dakota who are American Indians living on a reservation, female American Indians, whose life expectancy is about 64 years of age. If you look at that difference, it's about 25 years difference. Now why is that? Why are women in South Dakota living on an Indian reservation, who are getting free health care, by the way, who are getting the very best government-offered HMO Indian service health care that's available, free? And they live 64 years of age, and the women in Bergen County who pay for their health care 
are living 91 years of age. What is the difference? The difference is just that. It's the anti-aging preventive medicine model of healthcare versus the government's model of HMO state-issued healthcare. That's a 25-year difference, and that's the longevity dividend as it stands today. The difference between an anti-aging physician who goes through our training program is he's not just a doctor, he's actually a lifestyle coach. This doctor is interested in every phase of your life, so it's necessary for the physician to spend more time with the patient. Our doctors need to know and want to know what's really going on with this patient. And that's why when you go see an anti-aging physician, you're going to spend a lot more time in their office because they want to really find out what's going on with you and how to fix it, not band-aid it, not give you a drug just to mask the pain you have. So now you don't on one drug or two drugs, you're on six or 10 or 12 drugs. And when you go to an anti-aging physician, generally what they're trying to do is wean you off of those drugs and get you into a more healthy lifestyle so that you're not taking two or three blood pressure medications and you don't need sleepers to go to sleep at night and uppers to get up in the morning. We're trying to change the way you function in a healthier fashion. Your body can heal itself if you allow that to happen. Preventive medicine is a whole new paradigm shift in medicine. This is not the way I was trained to do medicine in medical school. I've learned a whole new way of looking at the body. So when patients sit down with me, one of the most important things I do is I talk to them about what's going on in their lives, what the stressors are. I also talk a lot with my patients about lifestyle, including of course exercise. What are they eating now? And detail by detail, what are you eating in the morning? What's next, what's next? I want them to emphasize the fruits and vegetables, the lean proteins, the healthy fats. I teach them about sugars and the dangers of sugar. And I talk to them about stress management techniques. If they're stressed out, I might refer them to a counselor. I might talk to them about different stress management techniques that they can employ at home or just different changes they may need to consider making in their lives. This is really different from everything that I was taught to do in medical school. At A4M, we give the doctors these tools and they keep coming back and back and back and back again for more and more and more. And they migrate their practice more and more from the old school diseased palliative model to the new school of anti-aging medicine, which is the early detection, prevention, treatment, and reversal of aging-related disorders. I think the most important thing for a doctor who may not be engaged in integrative care or functional medicine or regenerative medicine, anti-aging medicine, um, it's to understand that your patients are already there. They want prevention programs. They want to be empowered to manage their health. The consumer has already spoken. And if you're going to be their trusted source of information, if you're going to be that person, you have to be open to understanding where your patient has already stepped into the world they're living in and really partner with them to empower them to live a healthier life and help their families live healthier lives. We're an inclusive society. We have physicians from every specialty. We don't have a prejudice towards doctors in different fields. We embrace the physicians. You'll have an orthopedic surgeon sitting next to a neurosurgeon, sitting next to a chiropractor, sitting next to a brain surgeon, next to a hormone replacement, next to an endocrinologist and a general practitioner, all in the same row. And that's what makes it so exciting because now they're all talking the same language. You would never see the, a bunch of surgeons together with general practitioners with a nephrologist and orthopedic surgeon You'd see them at an orthopedic conference and there'd be all orthopods or endocrinology conference and they're all endocrinologists. You wouldn't see this mix, but all of these doctors have the same mindset and the same thought process. How do we take the best of the best from every specialty for our patients for maximum health? And that's the difference. That's the core difference between us because in essence, we're practicing the way everyone will practice medicine in the future. They don't know it yet, but they're gonna. We are changing the paradigm of healthcare, focusing on the early detection, prevention, treatment, and reversal of aging-related disorders. That's the way healthcare will be practiced. That's the way the doctor of the future will be practicing medicine. We can actually turn back the clock. By turning back the clock, I mean improving their function, improving their memory, improving their energy, improving how much fat they have in their body, how much lean muscle mass, how much bone they have in their body. These things are all possible today. All things have humble beginnings, and A4M, we had ours as well. When we started out, we only started out with 12 doctors who we flew to Chicago to discuss 
developing a whole new field of medicine, which we ended up terming anti-aging medicine. And our first conference was not really much to speak of. We had maybe 30 people, two booths, um, 10 guys giving lectures on just their particular interests. And, you know, it was all just a very tiny start. It was a brand new field, a brand new thought process. And you never really know where things are going to go. After our initial conference in Cancun, we moved it to the Alexis Park Resort. We went from 30 people or 25 people to 150 people. Then we went from 150 to over 300, and then to 5, 600, then to 800, then to 1,000, 1,500. So starting from just a dozen guys or so and one or two booths to hundreds and hundreds of booths and thousands of people and tens of thousands of members from over 120 countries, it's quite an exciting progression. Over the past 20 years, anti-aging has grown from a market size of zero dollars to uh, something like $169 billion right now. And it's continuing to increase at about 9.5% per year. A forum represents a new way of looking at health and illness, whether it's with stem cell research or uh, the ways in which new hormones can be applied for various conditions or disease states. And it's a very exciting place to be in that regard, having been in an academic institution for a long time where, while um, progress is made in very small increments, A4M represents a space where people can take leaps forward in the way that they uh, look at health and illness. Uh, there are very few institutions or organizations that allow for that kind of out-of-the-box thinking in a sense. A4M has been an agent of change. It has really moved society in many different ways. And it's done that by educating physicians. That's really what we do. We're a physician organization. Uh, we're a nonprofit. We're a public charity. Uh, we are there primarily to present and to identify new technologies and offer this information to physicians to educate them to practice better health care, to practice health care that's focused on finding the cure, uh, that's focused uh, not on palliative care, not just take a pill and maybe feel better, but actually let's get to the root. A4M has created really the first dynamic educational program internationally that we've ever had to teach people metabolic uh, medicine and integrated medicine where we really look at non-prescription, non-pharmacologic therapies, which are really the new paradigm, I think, in healthcare. At the A4M, we have a whole array of training programs and fellowship programs in everything from aesthetic and cosmetic medicine, stem cell therapeutics, sports medicine, anti-aging, regenerative medicine, functional medicine, nutritional medicine, lifestyle modification, just across the whole breadth, there are so many areas, and we're always adding more and more types of programs to really zero in and give the physicians the tools they need so they can really change their patient's life. Not just give a med, but what can you do to truly change the patient's life and have the education and the knowledge base so that you can affect that change. We're building a better physician. We're building a better healthcare practitioner who understands that medicine doesn't stop with the treatment of acute disease. The medicine doesn't stop until we've conquered the degenerative diseases we call human aging. Be part of the future. Be part of the anti-aging revolution. A4M is proud to announce the release of the Encyclopedia of Clinical Anti-Aging Medicine and Regenerative Biomedical Technologies. It's a must-have anti-aging reference guide for physicians and healthcare professionals alike. For more information or to order online, go to worldhealth.net.